Hello and good evening. A warm welcome to all of you today. First of all, I would like to wish a happy belated Diwali to all of you who celebrate. I'm sure all of you must have had a good Diwali. Today's topic is creating my reality. Is it possible to create our reality? There are three buckets in life, things we control, things we influence, and things over which we have no control. What is not under our control are the many random events of life, such as earthquake, this pandemic, illness, mm -hmm. job layoffs, and the death of loved ones, fires, car accidents, and many more. There are circumstances that we experience and events that we are aware of. Today, we have joining us Sister Kamla. She resides at Peace Village Learning and Retreat Center in New York. She has a wealth of experiences applying spirituality to daily life and moves through challenges with her light and easy nature. So let us all welcome Sister Kamla. Before we start, if um, any of you could just drop a message, if the voice is clear and it's audible, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Good morning, Sister Kamla. Good morning, Jabeen, and it's lovely to be with you in the same room. <laughs> Warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And should I say... For me, it's good morning, and for you, it's good afternoon. Good afternoon. So That's right. To just extend that warm wish to all of you and invite you here at Peace Village, um, where it's quite beautiful and scenic. So welcome, friends of Jabin. And definitely, we're going to spend a little time to talk about this topic a little more. And I'm sure you are very much aware of what it means and you would have had your own experience. Um, so actually it's a topic that was promoted by those with a more, I guess, a progressive view on life itself. And, and the ideas behind this phrase can be found everywhere. It is found in music, in television, in um, entertainment field, it's everywhere. They actually have a show that is called the reality show. Sometimes they use the expression reality check. So it is a very empowering <coughs> place. Um, and it's wonderful to know that I can create my own reality. Yeah? I can create my own reality. You can create your own reality. So does it mean if I see myself in the future, I want to be this happy person, um, full of joy, um, full of peace? Is it possible to create that reality? Yes, it is possible. We know for a fact this phrase has been in existence for more than 2,000 years. Can you believe that? Of course, it may be worded differently, but with the same meaning. And I'll just share a few with you. One of it is what you dwell upon, you become. And I guess if you think about something over and over and over, it begins to dominate your whole subconscious mind. And eventually you're, you're going to behave in that manner. And the second phrase, it's, we do not see the things as they are. We see them as we are. It's our perspective of life, our views of everything that comes to us is amplified when we look out there, whether it's people, the world, situation. And the third phrase, which I really like, is if you believe in it, you will see it it will manifest. And I'm sure some of you have heard this very popular saying, if you believe in something, you will see it. 
Sometimes we are not able to see it because we don't believe it exists. But it's not the other way around. If I see it, then I believe. If I believe in it, I will see it. We know in life we go through many phases as uh, Jabin, you were describing the situations, the pandemic, all kinds of things that are can actually appear as very ugly situations out there, the scenarios, experiences, and uh, yes, very graphic stories which you hear about what's happening in the world. Now, all of us as individuals would have faced some kind of challenges in our life, but we always need to know that we have a choice. We have a choice to pick and choose what we want to create in our life. And all of us have our own narrative, our own story. Your story will be different. My story will be different. And there is this you know, very popular story about two individuals looking through a window. And when they were asked, well, what do you see? When you look out, what do you see? And one said, I see the beautiful stars and the, you know, the beautiful sky. I see everything out there. The other person said, well, when I look out, I only see mud. I see the clay. So it depends. The perspective of each one is different. So we're actually going to go more into detail as what is it that creates this world of ours? that we see things differently. We have different experiences of life. And if there is a possibility to change that and make it quite meaningful and quite exciting, because I personally believe that life is meant to be enjoyed. And maybe some people believe it's a one-time experience or it's many life experience, but eventually it is in my hands, it's up to me. I have a choice. <clears throat> like I said, <clears throat> excuse me, like I said earlier, um, each one of us, we have our own narrative. And sometimes it's good to check what kind of story I am carrying around. And it's amazing. We don't normally check ourselves, or maybe we are not even conscious what kind of story we have. And all of us have been shaped by different events and situations, some good, some not so good. And deep in our subconscious mind, that is what we are carrying. And that is what is being expressed through our vision, through our interaction, through our behavior. And even it affects our relationship. But perhaps we never thought it's coming from my own world. And sometimes even for our own selves, and like I said earlier, not all situations in life has been a happy camper for ourselves. I've known people who have gone through very, very intense situations. And those situations actually seem to like shaping their personality, their perception of but themselves and others. Even with the laptop and all. Can you hear? Is it okay, Jabi? Yes, it's clear, sister. It's clear, okay. I just heard a sound. Okay, so back to this beautiful topic is, uh, I don't know if you ever had a thought, well, I am, I'm a loser. <laughs> I can never make it in life. It's not possible. And if, especially if I see others moving ahead and it's like you compare yourself, I'm not there, it will never happen, I'm not capable. All these, I think, self-doubts that come within the individual can really have a very, very strong impression in the mind. I remember many years ago, I met this doctor who came to visit the meditation center. Now he has his family, he has a beautiful profession, seemed to be happy, but he wanted to learn how to experience the silence and meditation. Interestingly, when we had a conversation, he said to me, 
many years as a little child, or maybe when he was a teenager, I don't remember. But he said, my mother said to me something not so nice. She said, you will never be successful. And maybe she said other things. He said, now he's a grown adult and dad has been many, many years have gone by. He said, whenever I remember what she said to me, I feel quite disappointed. I'm very unhappy, even until today. That's interesting. Now, all of us have gone through many, many variety of experiences. But sometimes, if we don't look within ourselves and recognize it's there, then it will follow us through the course of life. I met a woman in her 70s, and she said to me, I really want to get rid of some of the thoughts that come in my mind because I witnessed something about my sister. And that was maybe 30, 40 more years ago. And she said, every time I think about this situation, it really affects me and I want to be free of it. So of course, after a few sessions of practices, and one day she said, I just feel so happy, so light, so easy. So all of us carrying our own narratives of the past, of what happened, what did not go right, you know, what was not fair or just, we carry all these situations in our mind and it's there very much in our subconscious. And sometimes I think of it as we are I don't know if you know about my friend. He's called Jack in the Box. <laughs> Jack in the Box um, relates to all of us. We are in our own little boxes and we feel quite secure in that box. We don't think we need to open and come out and explore possibility in life. So we are in what is described as our comfort zone. And if there is this realization this world is a beautiful universe filled with a lot of wonderful things. I just need to have the courage to come out of my limitation, to explore possibility, to have the experience of everything that is beautiful around me. And like the saying that was mentioned earlier, if you believe in it, you will see it. And of course, we describe there are many situations now that are creating self-doubts, fear, anxiety, worry, tension. And actually, we can zoom into that and say, yes, that is real. This is what's happening. This is the real world. But at the same time, there is something much more beautiful happening. I have listened to people who said to me, because of this pandemic, they're able to come closer. Maybe they never had time for many years to connect and to enjoy having conversation, being together. And maybe they wanted to do so many other things in their life. And they felt this was a time that was given to them. So one side we can see just the darkness, but the other side, we can see the brilliance, the light, the beauty. Again, that depends upon myself. And sometimes in life, I don't know if you've ever recognized that within yourself of always complaining. Life is not great. Always putting the self in that victim mode, blaming, either blaming myself or what went wrong, or blaming others. And it's easy to point fingers, or oh, you're responsible. Maybe as much as the person would have been a trigger to create certain feelings in myself, but I had a choice. If I wanted to experience that feeling, I have the power to choose the feeling I want to create in myself. So not to be in this kind of victim mode of thinking it's the other one, it's the world, it's me. Because actually I'm the one that have been creating 
all these variety of experiences in myself. And secondly, it's whatever is in my world, I project it onto others. Yes, I project it onto others. I remember um, meeting with this person. And even if you say the most beautiful things, the most optimistic things, <laughs> she will not believe in it. She said, no, it cannot happen. It's not possible. It will not go well. And some of us, like I said, we are shaped or we were shaped by life situation. I have read stories about people who in this lifetime were very aggressive, very violent. And if you read about their life story, you would hear that as a child, they were abused or the, they were in drugs. They were not in the right company, but intentionally, actually deep within that being, there was that purity, that love, that truth. And I witnessed an experience of a person who came again, this is a very interesting story of this a man who came to the meditation center and his friend actually told him to visit. And when he arrived, he was like this huge guy sitting on the chair and for a moment he sat in silence and he started to listen what was being shared with him in terms of being positive and all these beautiful thoughts that you should believe in yourself. And after some time, he became like a little child and he started weeping. And he said to me, you know, I was brought up in an environment where there were drugs. My parents used drugs. I was in a very, very negative environment. I started to do all the bad actions you could think of. Even the police was looking for me and I was always on the run. I was always trying to hide myself away but because I was always in trouble. And he said, but I knew inside of me, there is some goodness. I knew I was not always like this. I am a good person at heart, but it's just, I got involved in the wrong uh, company. And that really brought light to me that never judge anyone. It doesn't matter how they be behave in front of you. Always look at it, not at the surface level, but deep inside that situations would have shaped that person. But deep inside of each individual, they want to experience love. They want to experience peace. They want to experience joy. And if I can see that in the individual, it would help me in my relationship with them. I asked a student recently, I said, if you are in front of someone who did a lot of bad things or said a lot of bad things about you, if you are in front of that person, then you have good wishes for them. And she said to me, no. <laughs> she said, I can't because I'll remember all the things they've done and all the things they've said. Second try, I said, okay. Now, if you're just to zoom into one beautiful quality or speciality of that individual, think about it. Just think about the person, maybe they're honest. Think about their honesty. And again, see if you can communicate with that person on the basis of their good quality. Would you be able to do it? And then she said to me, yes. So it's all about my um, perception, my own thinking, my own world that I keep projecting onto others. I project it on myself. I project it onto others. I project it onto the whole world. And I feel, you know, this world is hopeless. There is no future. All these negative thoughts that I have, there's never going to be happiness in the world. It's again, my own projection. And like the popular saying, if you believe in it, you will see it. Definitely. You believe in it, you will see it. So how do we uh, uh, remove all this stuff that is lying there for a very long time that we never had time to even look into our world 
and see what's there and to remove it. What is the catalyst of change? What is the kernel of wisdom or the secret that we need to use to change what's in my subconscious mind? Subconscious mind is what holds all the information. So whatever I see, my interaction, the images, the memories, the feelings, everything is there inside my subconscious world. So the outside world comes into my inner world and my inner world is projected onto the outer world. So it's, it's I think it's like more like a cycle what I take in and what I give out. And that's how sometimes we are in this victim mode. Seems like we can feel free. We are always in this kind of trap. Um, so this catalyst of change or the wisdom is of knowing, is of believing in possibility. It is possible for me to make that shift in my world if I choose to do so. If I have this awakening from inside that life is good, people are good, and I have beautiful qualities in me. If I start nurturing that belief, nurturing that faith, nurturing that deep experience, starting on a positive note, I'm going to see the beauty that's going to be projected out there into the world. And for that, I need to practice self-talk. Uh, perhaps you would have heard that um, affirmation, affirmation of the self. And it's good to think of yourself, of all the beautiful qualities you have in yourself. How many times do we sit to be with ourselves? You can perhaps check yourself and see from the moment you wake up in the morning, the moment you wake up, how do you start your day? I know some people, as soon as their eyes are open, television, music, sound, it's, it's like you start your day with so much of noise, especially teenagers. <laughs> You jump out of your bed and you just start running all over the place. And what a way to start the day. And of course, night, perhaps sitting in front of the television, looking at all these things, um, movies. And someone said to me, I was looking at this movie and it was not such a nice movie. And when I slept, it was I got all these nightmares. <laughs> So what was the cause? That was my reality. What I put inside of me came into myself, into my subconscious mind, and also project in my dreams, in my experiences. That's what I saw. It's just like the doctor is saying, you should eat healthy, you should exercise, you should do all these things. I heard it, but I choose not to do it. Sometimes we hear and we have these reminders from people or something. We know it's good for us, but still we don't listen to it. We don't put it into practice. And who suffers? Who suffers? I suffer. Because I did not heed the warning that was coming to me. It's very, very important to keep an open mind and to start making that huge shift huge shift because there is a possibility and a huge shift as I was saying is when we wake up in the morning to love life to embrace life to appreciate everything around me no I'm saying your attitude of gratitude is very important appreciating life appreciating every single moment and not to think that I am suffering. I am not the only, one, only person going through all these situations. So many people in the world are going through many, many major crises. And I should consider myself lucky and fortunate. 
And if I could start healing myself by elevating my consciousness through positive thoughts, positive affirmations, like I said, start the day with something that is useful. Sit quietly with yourself. And I know there are some people are not used to silence. I remember one person said to me, I don't know what to do in silence. I am scared. <laughs> Be scared of your own self. Because we don't have the habit of sitting with ourselves. Enjoy being with myself. If I enjoy being with myself, I enjoy my own company. I enjoy my silence. And I sit creating very positive, elevated thoughts. And I taste it's like tasting the sweetness of a nectar. When you taste the sweetness of something, you want it again and again and again. So these practices help us to reshape our inner world, to reprogram our inner self. And that is with affirmations. To tell myself, I am a beautiful soul. I am capable. I am worthy. I have self-respect. I have values. I have beautiful qualities. And also to notice what is special about you. Not in an egoistic way. But sometimes someone give you a compliment. Oh, you're very calm. You're very wonderful. You're very creative. You're very positive. You're very inspiring. Take it as a compliment. And recognize what's there inside of the self. Because it's good to acknowledge I have something. I have something wonderful. And if I nurture it over and over, it's just like anything you have. You nurture it, <laughs> it will become huge. It will have a big influence around yourself, your society, and the world in general. So self-talk. And so waking up in the morning, spending just maybe five minutes, let's see. Spend as long as you want. Start with five minutes. Create these affirmations, beginning of the day. And sometimes when you have a moment, just pause and be with yourself in silence, in reflection. And also at the end of the day, because there is a connection between the ending and the beginning. If I go to bed and I'm relaxed and I'm peaceful, then that will help me when I wake up in the morning, I'll be in the same frame of mood. I'll be peaceful, I'll be quiet inside. But if I go to sleep, like the story I told you, I'll ruffled and filled with all these thoughts, then I will wake up feeling not rested, not calm. So to watch myself, to watch the narrative I'm creating in myself or my stories and to make a shift because I have a choice. I can create my own reality. And what I find also useful, it's um, visuals. Visual. I, I think some of you perhaps would have recalled a beautiful time when you were a child or a teenager and you went someplace with your relatives or families or your grandparents or your parents. And when you recall those experiences, you feel very happy. Even as adults, I hear stories of adults saying, you know, we used to go camping, we used to go outing, traveling, visiting, and what a wonderful feeling it used to create. The power of visualization is so great. You think of an image and you're feeling it. Someone is relating a story. Maybe they've gone through something not so pleasant. You're listening to the story. You're feeling the emotions. 
Have you felt that? You're feeling their pain. You're feeling their sorrow. Visuals are very, very powerful. And is it possible? I was having this thought, is it possible to separate myself from the images that come to mind with the feelings? Now, sometimes something happened, we talk about it, and we start feeling the pain instantly. Is it possible to separate the two? I could still reflect on something, but I don't feel the sorrow, I don't feel the pain. And yes, it is possible. If we have made that inner progress in our life, if we have journeyed towards something more meaningful, then I will start to let go of all these old feelings that I've been carrying. A mother who had shared a story of something traumatic she had been through, very, very traumatic. And she shared it with her, all her family members. And I happened to be looking at that video and I know her story, it's been many, many years ago, horrific story. Um, and when I was looking at the way she was sharing, I noticed something very interesting. I noticed she was not emotional at all. She was not upset. She was not angry. But she was coming more from a place of an observer of herself, of her life. So the emotions would have faded away. And that for me was quite an eye opener that it doesn't matter what you have gone through in life, but with these practices, you have the choice to put it aside and to move on in a more meaningful way. So some people do ask the question that all the things that happen, when they come to mind, they disturb that being. So how through the practice of positive thinking, affirmation, and creating something that is dynamic in my world, I am replacing I'm creating my reality based on something that is more meaningful, more positive, more constructive. But I need to spend time to do that, to create that experience within myself. So visualization, creating positive images, and also notice yourself. What are you gravitating towards in terms of people, are they talking about positive things? Something that will help you, something that will help themselves. Or sometimes we also find ourselves, uh, if you want to call it gossiping about something, someone, somewhere. These are called habits. Habits that is deep in the subconscious mind and are very powerful. Someone has the habit of gossiping and I join them and it becomes two, three, and more. What kind of energy am I generating? Do I have the power to change that? So watching myself, what am I creating? And making that change. I want to create a meaningful life for myself, for my family, for the world. I want to leave a legacy behind. I want to be that being that embody goodness. Now we notice there are some people, they are born with certain specialities, good qualities. They're peaceful. They never are into arguments and fight. And it seems that their life is totally organized. We can take inspiration from others. We can be inspired by what we see, what we hear. The question is, can I inspire myself? Do I have to wait for someone to inspire me? <laughs> I find sometimes, I think some of us have brilliant thoughts. We say, we want to do that. We, we really had a thought to do this, whatever it is. Maybe it could be a project or something, but we never did it. <laughs> we procrastinate. Procrastination is a thief of time. 
Why do we procrastinate when something beautiful has entered our mind? Let's say, for example, I'll just take a physical example. I would like to start going to the gym. I would like to start exercising. I would like to start having a healthy diet and do all these beautiful things that will enhance my being, my well-being of my body and mind. Yes, I, I had this brilliant thought, but nothing happened. Again, what creeps in is a laziness, laziness of procrastinating. I'll do it tomorrow. Again, I've heard people saying to me, you know, I really regret after so many years, I wanted to do this beautiful thing and it never happened. I wanted to pursue a certain career, but I never did it. I let it be, I let go, it never happened. And after many, many years, the circumstances have changed. Now it's just wishful thinking. I can't go back into the past. It's gone. Maybe my health is failing. Something. I can't do it. So procrastination really takes away the beauty of someone's life. Because we feel we're going to live forever. Now, we, we never, no one ever, ever had the thought, I'm going to leave this world. Not that you should entertain it in that level that I will die. But at the same time, whatever I can do now, whatever I can accomplish in this moment, to pay attention to doing that and to see the beauty of it manifesting. So noticing, because all these habits are very, very chronic, ingrained, they've been there a very long time and I've never noticed it's there. So now in this experience of silence, sitting with the self, noticing what's there that is keeping me back from moving forward and having that inner power, inner strength to change it. Again, if you believe in it, you will see it. The spending quality time in silence, in reflection, in amplifying, in nurturing all these beautiful qualities that you have. And even if you don't have it, you can create it. There is possibility. And creating that is just a matter of taking some time. And when you take some time for yourself, your lifestyle will improve and everything around you will improve. Because one of the greatest I think the thing that we desire is to have a beautiful relationship with people. Yes. It's possible. I can enjoy being in the company of everyone. And that will only happen when I start these practices. In the sense, I see the positive in the individual. I see that which is positive within me because that's my world now. What's in my world, that's what I'm going to share. I think about love. I feel love. I experience love. And people will love to be in my company. Perhaps you would have maybe had an experience where, where you're with someone and they have this kind of heavy energy, heavy vibration. Now, people are walking with all these stuff. And you feel the energy, you feel the vibration. If we remove all these unwanted baggages we've been carrying around and we are light and we are happy and we are easy and we embrace life, we embrace people because we love them, we care, we share, we have compassion and it's coming deep within our soul, then that is a real gift for the world. Because right now, the world needs to be healed. And of course, we believe in the power of thought. If we cannot reach out to an individual, or especially the times of pandemic, whatever is happening around us, we have mercy, we care, we have compassion. So if we sit together in silence and create healing thoughts for the world, then as a possibility, as a group, 
we can share that with others. We can share that energy and help to heal others, to heal the world. And with our own vibration, we contribute towards making our space healthier and helping each other to move along. It's very, very important. One person can have an influence among so many other people. If I take this initiative to transform, to make myself more peaceful, more loving, more kind, more compassionate, and if I share that value with the world, then that itself is a huge contribution. And all it takes is a bit of time just to nurture myself, just to love myself. And I think this is the beauty of life. This is what we want to create. So I found this topic is very, very interesting um, because it tells me I have the power, I have the potential, I can do it. So when we listen to ourselves, sometimes we hear this, the negative part is coming in and saying, no, it's not possible. Gently remove it. Replace it with something positive. It is possible. I can do it. And also when I interact with another person, the moment you notice you're moving in a different direction of noticing their flaws, their weaknesses, stop and change that. Because that is changing your dynamic and interaction with another person and building a bridge in your relationship with them by seeing their beauty, by seeing their speciality, by seeing what they can offer to the world. So it all starts with me. And yes, it's a lot of work, it seems like a lot of work, but I can make it fun, I can make it interesting, and I can make it a happy place. Because like I said, if you believe in many lifetime, you believe in one lifetime, you want that experience to be rich, to be of value. And when you leave that as a legacy, many others will enjoy the fruit of that experience. So opening the heart, opening the soul, and bringing all these special, special qualities inside. And that will be our value of life. The value of life is based on what kind of values we have imbibed or qualities we have imbibed. And that is how people remember a person. They say, this man was very caring. He was very kind. He was very loving. He's remembered by those qualities. And this is what we want to create because we love ourselves. We love the world. We are one family. We share the same resources, the same universe. We are a family. So we have to love each other. It's not just my family I love. I have to extend my vision beyond. Like Jack, out of the box, beyond. And embrace whole of humanity with a lot of love and share that as a gift. So I thought I'd like to share those words of inspiration based on the topic. And I'm sure all of us will spend quality time to look more into our own life and to make a huge shift and see the result of that. I'm not saying that none of you are doing that. As some of you are probably already there and you don't have these experiences or sharing which I'm talking about today. But still, we can do a check and we can make a difference to enrich our life and make it beautiful and meaningful. So I thought I'll pause there and thank you all for being so patient. Thank you, Jabeen. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, sister.
you have indeed opened a lot of uh, thoughts in our mind and it's been a very eye-opening session today all that you shared what i took from today's session is what we control and where we really start is to create our reality to create our reality is in how we perceive we interpret or we think about the events in our life that generate our feelings about those events and how we subsequently respond with our behavior no one can choose your thoughts or actions those are yours alone and of course not to forget the three phrases that you brought up today was what you dwell upon you become and we do not see the things as they are we see them as we are and the third one is if you believe in it you will see it so we can also turn it around when we see something and we believe in it we need to turn it around is that possible sister we can turn it around we have the power we have the capacity we believe in ourselves and then we can do it i've seen a lot of people who are able to have this quite determined thought of doing something of putting something or a a vision they've had for themselves into practical and it happen it just need that consistency it need the will power it needs the determination and i think when you have this um zest for life that you really want something um you really will go after it it doesn't matter what it has to come from that i think pure um space within the being your pure intent and definitely you will see it manifesting i do believe in that okay so let us get into a reality check like you said let us get into that mode of reality check for a few minutes if you could lead us for a few minutes to a meditation and then sure. we could start with the question and answers sure so i'll invite all of you to sit relaxed in a very comfortable position settle into silence into my own inner space into my sacred space upon the qualities i have that i believe is innate within me i reflect on peace i believe i am that peaceful being originally my nature is to be calm and peaceful and tranquil i remove my thoughts from any images that comes in my mind to distract me from this journey because right now i'm settled into my space enjoying being with me let me ponder on some of the qualities i see in myself i believe there is possibility i believe i have the choice to translate any powerful thought 
into action. I am self-motivated. I inspire myself to see the beauty of life. I am the creator of thoughts, images, feelings, I have the enthusiasm to create that which is meaningful and beneficial for myself, my family, and the entire world. When I nurture these qualities within myself, it generates a fresh energy and that energy is radiated into the world. I heal myself with the power of positive thoughts. I enhance my relationship with others by seeing their good qualities, their specialities, their innate qualities. I exchange this beautiful energy with anyone I see. And there is the experience of sharing as a family together. Settling into silence, enriching my innate qualities, nourishing these virtues and watch them flourish. I am the creator. I create my reality. I create positive visuals. And I have a powerful experience of positivity, of beauty, of light. Let's stay in a moment of silent reflection. Thank you, sister. That was really nice. Um, what, what the first question that we have here is to create um, your reality or one's reality. Is there any boundaries or you can create anything that you would like to be in your future as in even like your health? Yes, lovely question. Um, actually, I've done some of these experiments myself relating to health and relating to so many other aspects in my many years of meditation. And I've seen how it works. So I create the reality of even while going through situations with health, for example, and that which was very inspiring and very positive, and I believed in it, and I got the confirmation in silence. 
I felt I received that inner strength and inner power. And I was able to overcome any other thoughts. Nothing could stop me from having acquired so many variety of rich experiences came to me. So yes, believe in it, create it, it will happen, it will manifest. Our next question is, how do we detach from our emotions and feelings and be aware of ourselves all the time? Easy to do it while meditating, but how do we put it into practice? Mm -hmm. Yes. This question was once asked to one of our very senior teachers, meditation teacher, because she um, traveled the whole world and she was meeting a lot of people, listening to their stories. And you know what it is like when you listen to someone's story, it kind of goes in yourself and you start thinking about their story. You start feeling their sorrow and pain. So the question was posed to her, um, how do you manage to keep yourself safe from all the other energies that exist? And she said, of course, it was the practice of being an observer of life. There are many, many practices we can implement into our life. And one of it is learning to be an observer that you mentally can disconnect and notice life in a different way as uh, being on a stage and everyone as actors playing their part, beautiful part. And so even if you're looking at, let's say a football game, you feel the joy of it, but you're not inside of the game. So looking at life in that broad perspective of um, enjoying or a learning experience and taking all the positive with yourself. Of course, I'm not saying it's an overnight experience, but gradually with the practice, you're able to um, develop that deep in, deeper insight with wisdom and also with the power together. So wisdom I find is very important or knowledge with understanding that gives me a different perspective of everything around me. So I'm not absorbing like a sponge, the vibrations out there. I can still be myself, still integrate with the world and the people, but I've kept myself protected because of my positive affirmations and my practices, which is building that energy around me, which eventually protects me from what's happening out there. I'm not sure if it answers that question, but that's what came to mind. So basically being detached is being above, yeah. What you mean to say is, so you are not affected by the situation because you are above and beyond the situation. Yes, yes. You're looking at life in a different perspective of like I give the example, life is a game. It's how you see it. Life is meant to enjoy, but at the same time, you understand what's happening in the scenario and you keep yourself safe because then you can help others. If you fall as a victim as others, then you can't help anyone. So with time and practice, it becomes possible. We have one more question, sister. Mm -hmm. I know what is in my way, which is self-doubt, but I can't get rid of it because it's deep-rooted. Could you share what I must do? I think you have to change that language now. Remember what we said? You said you can get rid of it. You can. So you change that can't to can. You can do it. This is the first step. And I have to believe in it. Now, my personal experience is um, working with silence and using these powerful thoughts and watch how it manifests itself. So change that vision, uh, the moment you say you cannot do it, then you're putting a block, an obstacle there. So now make that shift. 
say it is possible. I can remove it. It wasn't there before. It got created sometime in my life. Now think of yourself um, way back as an innocent child. We didn't have all these things, right? We were innocent. By the way, we adopt all these, whatever is happening in life. Now we have to have the belief I can do it. Yes? So just experiment for a week or two weeks and see. Any thought that comes to your mind like this one that I cannot, it's not possible, it's not going to work, you change it. It will happen, it is possible, and I can see positive results. Yes? Thank you, sister. This last uh, answer just reminded me of a story. I'm sure everybody must have heard of this story that the small boy asks a saint or a wise man that he sees two foxes and he says, which fox is stronger? And the wise man says, is the one that you feed the most. So it's mm -hmm. just the same like the thoughts that we feed the most and we keep on saying, I can't, I can't. Mm -hmm. That is what is going to just get stronger. So yeah. yeah, like you said, we need to feed it with, I can, I can. Yes, yes. Let's defeat the negative. Come on, everyone. <laughs> we say, yes, we can do it. It's possible. Okay. So collective as an energy, we will do it. It will happen. <laughs> yes. So this I is must... what we have our homework now. Yes, yes. But I'm, I really appreciate you having me on board and uh, all these beautiful souls you have there with you. Um, I can't see all of them, but you know I feel the energy. It's a wonderful energy. And this will be a memory that I will cherish for a very long time. Those from Indonesia and elsewhere, sitting in the same room, having a beautiful conversation and seeing your beautiful faces and vibration and smile Yes, it brings joy to me. So thank you from the heart, Jabin. I really did enjoy. Thank you. And I would like to request all the participants to put on their camera. It would be nice to thank Sister Kamla for joining us today. It's four in the morning or five in the morning right now for her. If I know, I heard about Brother Frank. Hello, Brother Frank. <laughs> Yeah, and Brother other... Frank, it would be nice if you could unmute yourself, Brother Frank. Brother Frank, you are on mute. Okay. Yeah. That's Lovely right. to have you with us. It's been a long time. Um, our yes. Indonesian family enjoys these meetings. I can't always join because of other... I'm in Bali, not in Jakarta. Yes. So, yes. So, Already our evening meditation buddy is underway. So. But thanks, uh, and we look forward to maybe you joining us again sometime in the future. It was a lovely chat. I enjoyed it very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Brother Frank. Thank you all. And all the beautiful sisters and brothers. Your smiles a lot. Do you know that? The smiles say a lot about you. So when you look in the mirror, look at your smile. <laughs> 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 look at that beautiful smile it's going to be reflecting back at you and uh, yeah and Baba said today don't worry be happy yes don't worry be happy why do we worry no need to worry because it doesn't help anyway no the language change no worry be yeah. happy just to be happy <laughs> okay I gotta say bye bye goodbye oh, thank have you. a beautiful have a evening thank you Jabin. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We will be Thank having you another for session. Nice class. Thank you. Our next session is on coming Saturday, the 28th of November. So do hope all of you can join us again. Look Thank forward. you and have a nice weekend. Thank you, Jabi. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.